We're here today with um, Dr. McCaffrey to talk about choice of birth after a cesarean section. So Dr. McCaffrey, oftentimes in my baby clinic, a mom who has had a cesarean section will ask me, in a subsequent pregnancy now, will I need to have another cesarean section or could I have a vaginal birth? Well, there's um, usually, by and large, for most people, if they've had a cesarean section in the past, they have options for their next delivery. After one cesarean section, we know that women have a 75% chance of having a normal delivery if everything goes in their favour in the subsequent um, labour. For example, that they start labour spontaneously themselves, that they have a normal BMI. A big important one is if they've laboured in the past. Having laboured in the past is very important. And especially you might have a woman, say for example, who's had a normal delivery in the past and then had a section because, purely because the baby was breached, she would have an extremely good chance of having um, a vaginal delivery. She probably has a 90% chance of having a vaginal delivery starting labour herself and that's the real key because we can't induce people after a previous cesarean section not with prostaglandins yeah. so we're limited in our choices because of the risk of the scar maybe rupturing or just tearing in labour so that would limit their choices um, some women feel they've had maybe a bad experience mm, yeah. that they've had an emergency cesarean section they found it a little bit traumatic and they feel a planned section might be better for them but I suppose they've got to balance that options and that's why we're here to give them information so they can make choices. Okay, so if, um, if a lady now has presents to you after having a cesarean section but really would like to try for a vaginal birth next round, what, what happens? Like, does she come to you first and discusses all this? Or well, at the beginning how? of the pregnancy, we'd review her notes from okay. the previous labour and we'd try and figure out why she had the cesarean section in the first place. Um, obviously, if it was because she didn't progress well in labour or it might be that she had a bleed and had to have an emergency section, is it likely to be a repeat situation? Probably not. Okay. So it would be all about trying to um, gear her up towards going into labour herself and just if they've been traumatized as well by the previous section that comes up quite a lot and they found the rushing to theatre for an emergency quite hard and they think an elective section might be better we have a counsellor who works with us here on as one of our counsellors here in the Scotia Clinic Tara O'Connor and she has trained in traumatic birth debriefing and I do think that a session with that to tease out what the issues are plus remember sometimes it can be the partner who's traumatized from watching the whole thing as well and sometimes after an emergency section they might be separated away from the baby and and it's just to try and balance things so I suppose the pros and cons of each if you have a vaginal birth after cesarean section there is a small risk of the scar running into trouble yeah. um, so the risk of scar rupturing is probably quite small it's probably about one in 500 one in two to 500 depending now what's also important as well is what kind of cesarean section they've had in the past so when we look at the womb this is what the womb looks like and we talk about lower segment cesarean section which is the lower part of the womb and a cesarean section which is a classical one in the upper part of the womb that scar is very high risk for rupturing, so we would usually recommend a repeat section in that situation. Equally, if someone had an operation called a myomectomy, where they had fibroids um, removed in the past, they almost inevitably have to have a cesarean section the next time out. Whereas a lower segment cesarean section scar is way less risky for rupturing. So that will be part of our decision making. The other thing we have to look at as well is where the placenta is in relation to the old scar. Is there any risk of the placenta being embedded in the scar, which is called placenta accreta? We have to look at that as well. So we'd be monitoring all those things. So from a vaginal birth after cesarean point of view, obviously, if as I said, if they've labored in the past, it'll be easier. Um, the recovery for the mother is going to be better if she hasn't yes. had a cesarean section. She's able to get up and about, breastfeed her baby. She's not going to be in so much pain. She can take early discharge from hospital. All of those things are take, have to be looked at and taken into account. But you really can't decide till you've got to the end of the pregnancy because you might find you're all set up for a VBAC, which is vaginal birth after cesarean, and then she doesn't go into labour. She goes a week overdue, maybe two weeks overdue, still not in labour 
will there be options for inducing her without using prostaglandins and your your best chances if you labor if you start labor yourself so then what are the pros and cons of having a planned section which is what people often are thinking about obviously a planned section is easier to recover from than an emergency section probably a little bit less traumatic you're exposing yourself to surgery risk of clots risk of bleeding wound infections you're a little bit less mobile after it um, you have the issue of not being able to drive for six weeks so there are lots of pros and cons so what we would do is go through all of those pros and cons we have an excellent patient information leaflet and women need to balance it up for themselves and decide what's best for them and we'll respect that decision we would love women to have a vaginal birth rather than a c-section but at the end of the day we have to respect people's choices and if we can use people like Tara to work with them and debrief them and get to a perfect situation we can if someone has had two cesarean sections yes. then inevitably we would probably recommend um, a repeat section okay it's safer the risk of a scar rupturing at a, an elective section is only one in a thousand so even though the risk is very small with um, with a VBAC it's less with a planned section so then I suppose what I would like to talk about because women worry often the women who've had an emergency section mm -hmm. in the past have had really long labors and they were exhausted and they might have ended up with a cesarean section because they were just in labor for hours on end and we would manage their labor differently the second time out okay. first of all we use something in all our labors called a partogram and a partogram is a graph where we plot progress in labor so when a woman comes in in labor we do a vaginal examination and we decide how many centimeters she's going to be in labor so let's say average woman comes in her first examination she's three centimeters in labor so then she's allowed to mobilize and do whatever she wants to do she might have an epidural she might mobilize and we examine her two hours later and this line on the partogram is what we call an action line so if she was three centimeters we'd expect probably a centimeter an hour so if after two or three hours she hasn't progressed we would maybe break the waters and rupture the membranes and examine her a couple of hours later and if she hadn't progressed we may or may not use oxytocin but all of the time we're conscious that women should be on this side of the action line so they should be progressing well mm -hmm. and if someone isn't progressing well we'd be worried about the scar rupturing because we can only use so much oxytocin so i always say to women who are planning to have a VBAC, we're not going to have you in labor for 12 hours you're not going to have to put up with 12 hours of labor You'll be in, you'll be examined in two hours, you'll be assessed two hours after that, you'll go on oxytocin. So worst case scenario, if you're not progressing, the decision to maybe do an emergency section would be done six, eight hours. So it's not going to be, and you can have your epidural. They do have continuous monitoring, obviously, in labor because of the risks to the scar. And we have to be aware of that. Obviously, any complications in labor, meconium, temperature, anything that we'd be concerned about, then we would revert to um, doing an emergency section but any woman who comes in the door of a hospital in labor can have an emergency section so really that's where the balancing act is for us and for people to hear about this in advance yes. to have their notes from the previous section reviewed is always a very good starting point to try and figure out why it happened and maybe it'll be very obvious, maybe she's diabetic, maybe it's a big baby. And we sometimes look at it realistically and say, well, you would be better off with a planned section. And that's not a bad thing either, yeah. because the end game for us is healthy mother, healthy baby, going home out of the hospital, live and healthy.